Okay. Hello. So, welcome. My name is Lubomir. This is Mohan, and we are. Well, we are. We will try and tell you something about what happens with Fedora Composes, how they are done, what issues there are, and what might be possible to do about fixing that. Like in the keynotes, you heard like a lot about the, what's the bright future and what what are like the high level goals. This is nothing like that. We will basically just tell you how, what we can do to keep on tracking the way we are right now, just slightly faster so that we eliminate some of the problems. So first, we'll sort of try and describe what problems we're facing, why it's bad, then try and describe, say, what's actually the cause of those slowness issues that we are facing, and then we'll try and brainstorm some solutions. And this is actually where you come in because we are looking for suggestions. So the main problem is that Fedora Composes are taking way too long. So for Rohide, on a good day, it's eight and a half hours, but there were cases where it took maybe 18, 20 hours as well. That's not really doable, especially given that there's basically a single person who usually runs those Composes. So especially before release, we need to make, make it possible to test changes in installer and all the important packages. And if it takes eight hours, that's sort of not really fast iteration. So that's what we would like to fix. And let's actually try and describe what's happening in the Compose. So as you might know, the Composes are done with a tool named Panji, which does a whole lot of work, and it tries and do, does do it in a parallel way so that it's not completely stupidly slow, but still it's not that perfect. So the actual work is split into multiple phases. I'll try not to ruin everything here. So we are not at C, okay? I just hit the screen. <laughs> it will calm down. So. This is basically the overview of, of what's happening in there, and I will go into more detail about each part of that. Okay, next, please. So, first, some of the housekeeping. That's those are things that are fairly necessary for the compose, but are relatively quick. I mean, I will have these average times. Those are averages taken from last five rawhide composes, and it's an average. So. This sort of housekeeping takes uh, almost 40 minutes. So in the init phase, we start by preparing the comms files that includes checking out the Git repo, including translations in there. And some housekeeping at the end of the compose is computing checksums for all the images that were generated. And there's actually quite a lot of them. So it's not just the same server installer. We have netinst images, there are live media, there's a bunch of spins and labs. For all of these, we need to make sure that we have a checksum. Some people might want to check those at some point. And one more. The test phase at the end is relatively simple. Essentially, all it does is we run repo closure on all the repos that we created. Usually in Rohide, there are problems for actual released versions of Fedora, like on GA date, we probably shouldn't have many of those, but to be honest, there still are some of them. And also we run some tests on the images themselves. Like if something claims to be an ISO file, we actually check the headers if it is an ISO file. If it claims to be bootable, we check some flags and magic bits in the file to verify that it can actually be booted, at least in some way. Because in the past we have been bitten by this that the process changed a little bit, and suddenly we could ISOs in a VM, I think. It worked if you burned it on a physical media, but who does that nowadays? So next slide, please. So the first real slow part is the called package set, and this is essentially about talking to Koji and figuring out what packages were built and should be included in the Compose. Historically, we have started with a single Koji tag. Fi the next you find signed copies on the file system because you can't really get that nicely from the API. And once we have all the signed copies, we create a temporary 
RPMMD file repo on the file system that's be used in the following phases. So this just includes really everything that's in the tag, and there's one repo for each architecture. There's no, no filtering at this point, and as you can see, like it takes over an hour, so it's not ideal. Next, please. So the first part that's using this repo is called build install for historic reasons, because originally it used to call the script called build install. Nowadays, here we just run Lorax to create install tree. So there's a boot ISO, there's configuration for grab. And on average, it takes maybe 43 minutes, but it varies quite, quite wildly. Like if it, on a good day, it can be done in 10 minutes. On a bad day, it can be two hours. It also it depends on, for example, how busy Koji is, because all this happens on Koji builders. That's the individual instance, actually. That's the actual individual instance, because if you check the logs from the compose for how long the phase took, due to how it's implemented, like it will only report that it's finished after these two things have finished as well. So it's not really doable from that. So I just looked at, I think it was 90 tasks in Koji from, the, from those five composers. And I ran the average over that, and that was the result. They might be in the, uh, sorry, the comment was that the builders in Koji that are used for these tasks are in their own channel. So it shouldn't vary based on the load. So in that case, I have no idea why it varies so much. If there's more than one of these running once, then right. there's no queue up, right? Right, yeah. 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 But it's not. But he only looks at individual tasks. Right. Yeah. So do you, think right. That, do you think that overall IO load on the Mount Koji affects this? So the question. it can be affected by the overall IO load on Mount Koji, and it quite possibly can be. I think it's pretty safe to say that that's the answer to almost everything. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't put a farm on that because, like, even when I, uh, I mean, I'm not doing it in like Tungy or whatnot, but whenever I'm running uh, image builds um, using Lorax, it takes a good deal of time, like. The shortest I've ever had a an Anaconda run that produces me a live a, a live media ISO is like 35 minutes. So the variation is probably due to the variation is most likely caused by bad things in the Montoji, but right. like the I've never actually had uh, Anaconda run quickly through through an image build. So like wow. there's a well, there, it, Anaconda yeah. slow. Let's put yeah, it this way: if so you download yeah. all of the packages locally and rerun Lorax five times, it should have about the same yeah. time. Yeah, no, it'll, it'll, it'll be consistent if they're all downloaded. So, okay. Except it doesn't catch anything, so there's the other problem. So, yeah. Yeah, so there was a very long comment that long Lorax comment is just slow, Lorax and just that's why it might take this time. So the next part is called gather, and this is basically when we d when Panji decides what packages should go into each part of the compose. Because technically, it's not just one big compose. There are separate parts. There's everything, which, as the name suggests, includes pretty much everything. There's server, workstation, cloud. And for each of these, we just include subset of packages that are in the overall tag. This is configured mostly by comps file in that each of those variants basically say, like, I want these comps groups, plus all the dependencies. So that's how it, we decide what goes in there. And once we know what goes in there, we create hard links to every single RPM, which is also in this phase. And overall, this takes over two hours. So there's definitely room for improvement here as well, because it probably shouldn't be taking this long. Why are we creating trees for every variant when nothing really uses them? outside of this process. So, so question, yeah. why are we creating trees for every single variant and architecture combination if there is nothing other than the compose process using them? Well, the answer to that, if there is something in the compose process that's using that, we sort of need the files and the repos there. That's a different question. Uh, why are we doing the entire tree every time that way instead of 
So we know we know what got built since, like, since the last time we did a compose. Why aren't we just removing the things that aren't there anymore and just having the new ones back? So suggestion, which is what we are exactly looking for. Why are we rerunning this whole process every time and not just including the changes that happened since the last compose? And wouldn't we know things like the build IDs that, in, that are the source of this, and as build IDs are changed based on that, you could just do merge repos and change all those. Yeah. Yes, and when we don't need to rerun the whole create repo, everything, we could just include the new builds. And that's a great suggestion. The reason why this is not done is that no one has actually implemented it yet. <laughs> right. In addition to that, it would still have to handle this yeah. case, right? Because you would still have an initial condition, or if you mess something up, you needed to do a, a full. Yeah, we, we, we need to make sure that we can actually run the process as a whole. So the part that would doing the that would be doing the incremental changes would still be sort of like an add-on to that. Like we still need to make sure that we can. Say for GA, we need to be able to create like the whole thing and run it at the same time, not just collect random pieces from Rawhide and say like, hey, yeah, this is Fedora 30 now. So I have another suggestion here. Uh, I noticed that it does hard links as a separate phase, so it creates all the repos and then runs hard link over it essentially. Uh, uh, here we don't yet create the repos that's over here. This is just figuring out what packages will be in that repo and hard links them into place. Okay, so, so it is hard linking them as it's... So, so they can make a create repo, we will plug in one directory then. Uh, no, so the reason we're doing that is so that you can run create repo against the directory, right? Not necessarily, it's not just... Uh, sorry, the question is, are we linking the packages just so that we can run create repo over the directory? And the answer to that is no. We could run create repo against packages in random locations. That's not a problem. We already do that in package set phase. The, we need to copy the fi packages into some location so that we can rsync them to mirrors so, so that people can consume that. Oh, I see. So when you validate the, the, the tree, you can just go and say, push, and you're done. Like yeah. you're pushing to the, to yeah. the mirror master. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, for pushing the, to the mirrors, we need to make sure that we have something that is rsyncable. Like, we don't want to rsync random stuff from Mount Koji. I mean, technically, it's possible, but I don't want to be the one who has to implement that. <laughs> So one of the questions was related to why do we generate install trees for things when we don't ship them? Uh, so one, we stop doing that for cloud because we don't ship an ISO for cloud. Uh. Right, well, I'm just saying we don't do it anymore for cloud. And um, the reason that we have done that in the past is because we actually ship an ISO with an embedded repo on it for server, right? So we need a separate you know, repo for server specifically, because we need a repo that will fit on a four gigabyte DVD image, right? Um, for workstation, we ship an ISO, but it's a live install, right? So there's a long thread on a PAG or Relinge in issue that says, do we really need to do this for workstation? And, and, and so there's a long conversation there, and I don't think the answer is no. Um, we just haven't explored everything yet. Also, there is some value in having the repos, even if we are not shipping them, for creating, say, the workstation live media, in that like we know what set of packages was there. Like in theory, you could have like a package that's not listed in comps get onto the media if it was done from some other repo, not just this subset. It's it's not like a big deal. That's in Fedora, but for other use cases where this process is used, it is sort of like a requirement. We need to make sure that the images consume only the stuff that should be there. Out of those two hours, uh, what is the slow part? The slow part here is mostly figuring out the dependencies for the packages, because from comms groups, we know what. Do we know the packages? Or it's IO reading packages. It's it's not really the question of reading it. That's still relatively quick. We read the repo data that we prepared here. The thing is that we actually have to run a transaction for every architecture and variant combination and figure out all the dependencies, what should go in there, apply m rules for multi plus a few other magic rules that we created over time because someone needed to fix some problem. 
Yes, using Lipsoft could possibly speed this up quite significantly. There is some work in progress on implementing a backend that would use Lipsoft. Right now, it's basically Python code using libdnf to parse the repo data and ask for dependencies, like what provides this thing. So that's a big reason for the slowdown. Yes, does it similarly? They use Perl DS salt, and it's just a thin wrapper around libsalt itself to process that information uh, and just like export it. Yeah, so yeah. the comment was that OBS is using Lipsolf to solve similar problem, and it's very fast. And I can actually confirm it like from the tests on the new backend that I'm, I've been running, like it's a lot faster if we just run Lipsolf. I mean, technically we have to run it multiple times to add, like say, the multi packages. Yeah, but once it's moved into C, it's like a lo lot faster than the Python implementation we have now. Maybe we should move questions to the end, <laughs> so that we let you guys get through. That's stuff. fine. Next slide, please. So, as I said, this is just creating the repos for the files that are already in pla place. That's fairly fast. I mean, it could be faster, because right now it all happens on the machine that's running the Compose, which is usually there's one Compose machine for raw height, one for releases, so on and so on. And it could run anywhere. We could ship it to Koji builders and run one create repo on every single on separate builder. Might help us a little bit, but it's not a big pain point, it's just five minutes. And I mean, we run multiple processes at the same time. So I've actually bundled two OS3 parts here. That's creating the OS3 commit itself with the new updated packages and then creating an bootable image that includes the OS3. And this does take a fair bit of time. The thing that we can do here, and that will happen fairly soon, hopefully, is to move this and run it in parallel with these other bits and pieces. Because so, it, so to be clear, this is the OS3 and the OS3 installer phase together. Yes. So that yes. includes a run of Lorax. That includes oh a run of Lorax. <laughs> yeah. In the OS3 in installer phase. Yeah. Uh, quick question: Does this this is our current your, the times you're using are our current times? Recent? Yes. So is so this is has the S390 stuff in it? I think so. I mean, there are the the times are for, from five raw height composes, and I took five last successful, which is like two weeks ago. Yes, some bits and pieces are missing from that, but. That's another thing that, that could be slow, although yes. I don't have a solution there. Yeah, the, yeah. the comment here is that a slow part here might be that it's over all architectures, and some of them like, are relatively slowish. So the solution here is basically move this and run this, this part earlier than we do now. The reason why it's not done is that there was a bug somewhere between RPM OS3 and libdnf, and it got confused when it saw a repo with binary and source packages. This should be hopefully resolved now, but it, we need to make sure that it's tested. Uh, so, question then. If this is the time for the OS3, compo uh, the OS3 creation, and then the process for creating an installable image with OS3 embedded in it, what is the time for actually creating an OS tree commit by itself? Does anyone actually know how long that takes? I've never actually made an OS tree commit with, from RPM OS tree, so I don't know. Because I'm wondering how much of that time actually is one thing. Rough guess for uh, the question is, how does this time split between creating the OS tree commit itself and creating the image? And my guess would be that the installer creation should be roughly the same as for the regular installer. So about 45 minutes. So that would leave about 20 minutes for the OS3 commit itself. And obviously a lot of that is and also pulling images, or pulling RPMs. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. The comment is a lot of that is copying images, uh, sorry, RPMs, and not, not doing actual work. Like. Okay. So that seems to be a thing that happens in a bunch of phases. So a question that I've got is, why don't we, after we fetch the, the, the stuff the first time, 
why don't we, since this is being carried through through on the same machine, why don't we just hold the cache and pass it forward to the, new, to the rest of the phases so that we don't keep re-downloading every time? Uh, uh, the question is, why do we download the files over and over again? And the answer to that is that we're basically not. I mean, it's all on the same NFS volume. It's all running in the same data center, as far as I know. OK, yeah. We're yeah. What I'm saying is hold the cache directory and just keep filling it up. And that way, you don't have to keep redownloading. That skips like half of the process. Like a DNF install transaction, just a simple one, is about 3 quarters of it is fetching metadata and then downloading the packages process the transaction, the rest is relatively quick. Okay, so the suggestion here, and it's a good one, is to create a cache with the packages locally so that we don't have to actually check that again and again for multiple things. And then the, the, the follow-up to that then would be, can we also do like all the Lorax runs we're doing, can we do it on, do it on HIPAAs? Can we do it on oh yeah, RAM? it's fast. And yeah, moving Lorax to the MPFS is also a good suggestion. That one might be slightly problematic because we can't run all the Lorex tasks on a simple single machine. That needs to be like for each architecture, it needs to run on that par particular architecture. Like you can't you can't create an installer for S390 and something else. Every machine, like theoretically, an entire run route. Yeah, you should just be able to run it in in a RAM. Yeah, yeah. 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 actually. Why can't we do cross stuff with, with uh, creating routes and for images? Question it was, why can't we create installers for different architecture? And the answer to that is, I have no idea. So we'll take it down as a note, possibly run things in RAM. Uh, yep. <laughs> this brings us basically to the last part. And that's actually the biggest, slowest part. And that's creating all the live images and spins and whatnot. There are technically, all that stuff is split into four different phases because there are four different kinds of things that we generate. But overall, it, yeah, it's four, not five. I can't count today. Basically, it's all the same thing. We just run a task for it to finish. Once it finishes, we copy the file the actual image into the compose directory and we're done with it. Most of the time here is really just sp spent sitting and waiting until the task finishes. And overall it takes about three hours on average. So there might be some possible improvements here, but it would have to happen like in the actual tools that create those files. So the live media task I know runs Lorax yet again. This can actually produce It live should media. not run Lorax it because it's consuming the output from the Lorax run we ran before. LMC. LMC is Lorax. So it executes Lorax to produce and runs in Anaconda again to install back into the ISO environment to create the live media. Well, it, That's how that works. Well, it, so you have, at least there, each piece of live media is probably taking about 30 minutes by itself to fetch and redownload because it doesn't understand caching and then will actually install and produce the tree and then take about five minutes to make the okay, So. So the comment here is that at least Live Media Creator is running Lorax again, and we might be able to save some time there. Good thing to look into. Thank you. I have a suggestion here. We might want to look at, because all these things are in different channels, or many of them are in different channels. So we might want to create some logging or do something to indicate when we're filling those channels up, because we can reallocate those okay. areas. Okay. So it might be that we have eight images we're trying to build and only seven builders in there. If we add one, we actually save ourselves a lot of time waiting for that one to... Okay. Another comment is that we might get some speed ups here by reallocating builders in Koji so that it matches the actual demand. Because it's kind of not obvious from the actual process, like what takes how long. And we don't actually run everything on the same architecture. There are more images for x86-64 than for other different architectures. Okay, so I think that's it for my part, and I'll hand it over to Mohan for his more, say, ambitious ideas on how to fix our problems. Hello. Um, sorry, I was just taking some notes uh, with all the solutions. Uh, don't mind me typing on the mobile. But anyway, 
So, uh, you heard of the pain points, uh, why it is slow, and thanks for all the suggestions. Now, I want to uh, talk about a couple of solutions that I have in mind. And uh, these are the four solutions that I'm thinking of right now. Uh, well, fourth one is not my preferred choice, but I'm just putting it out there. <laughs> Uh, first one is like we are uh, running depth solving as part of the compost process. I want to move away, uh, move it away from the compost and run it on demand. Let's say if I, uh, let's take the example of Rathai. Whenever it gets built, it gets tagged into F29 pending tax, gets signed and moved into F29, 29 being raw height right now. So I want it to run depth solved once it gets signed and stored it by variant, by arch, so that it just, uh, also it uh, also finds the, uh, puts the location of this, all the uh, uh, bins. So whenever it Punji runs, we uh, we can eliminate the packet set, and as well as gather phase. Well, part of gather phase, because gather phase also ha does some hard linking, uh, but packet set and uh, part of gather phase can be removed, which essentially saves about two to two, three hours because it's taking more than three hours right now for both of those uh, phases, and they're not run parallelly. Um, so that being said, there are a couple of things we need to fix, uh, especially Koji, or some service that uh, Koji will call to do that absorbing, and uh, Panji changes because Obviously, we don't need all these uh, gather and uh, like, uh, <coughs> gather phases, so some changes over there. And that's the first option, or first option, and uh, my favorite option. <laughs> and uh, the second one is also my favorite. Basically, <laughs> tracking all the changes in the images, uh, what goes into the images. So, currently, the images are generated from uh, uh, looking at the kickstart, and kickstart might say like include some comps, and as well as uh, uh, some uh, you know build root changes and everything. If you can track all those changes and identify if anything has changed from yesterday to today, uh, compose basically, and uh, we can eliminate the creation of the same image over and over and just like uh, hardening the previous image uh, from a previous compose. Uh, essentially, what happens is uh, we have to run everything because everything changes every day. Um, so everything, uh, any <coughs> major creation related to everything, we have to run it. But all the other labs and uh, spins and workstation and even servers, sometimes we don't have to run them. Uh, so that will save a lot of time. And uh, when we looked, it's about like three hours plus. Uh, so I'm guessing it will come down to less than half of it. Uh, Anyway, guessing because we don't know how much how much, uh, how much of the things are changing uh, every day, but definitely spins and uh, labs won't change much. Um, so sorry, the quantify to just look at the produced images over bound period and just see how many are. Because my guess would be that actually in the, almost always something changes, right? Yes. But not in all the variants and all the uh, arches, right? So, like for example, arm may not be, the arm may be changing a little bit more than say uh, I686. Oh, S390X or PPC. S390X is special. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but isn't, I guess isn't the case that's going to reduce the average time, but not reduce the maximum time? Because like you know, one day you get lucky and nothing changes. The next day, the chronology of C changes, and every the whole world changes. is broken. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Eight hours or 10 hours yes, uh, there is a uh, there is a possibility of that, but uh, um, can you repeat the question? Oh, sorry. Um, so, if we implement this change, the uh, so the question is, if we implement the change, it's uh, going to reduce the average time of these uh, phases, uh, but not the total time. Uh, so, I would like to say that any any change uh, any time that we can save is really helpful especially during the freeze time that's what is actually uh, driving me to make these changes happen because during freeze times we actually get about like 
one or two days to <coughs> create the RC compose and sometimes uh, we'll find more bugs and every time we'll be stuck with like postponing the release by a week because we just found a bug. Uh, yeah, just before no go, go and no go meeting. So I would like to implement as much as I can to get that uh, number down. And some of the things we cannot do, uh, basically, as I said, asking for a new S3 TX mission, it's never going to happen. <laughs> or adding more builders, probably, but still. Uh, why would that never happen? Oh, talk to Kevin. <laughs> buying a mainframe? <laughs> sure. I didn't say buy one, but like, why would there not be more builders or things like that? No, no, no it's not about other creative ways to get it so that there's more capacity for targeted architectures. We we have access to X390 builders so yes. just in Boston. Yes, <laughs> the, the physical location difference is the problem actually. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and uh, all of our builders. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> all of our builders and Mount Fuji is located in uh, Phoenix location, yeah. whereas S390X is in Boston. So. So that, that means they have a network. Yes. Involved. Yes. yes. Yeah. Well, it's a slow link. Um, one uh, response to helping during freeze times. I don't know if this particular change would help us that much in freeze time because I feel like when when we're doing an RC, we would want to actually uh, do everything, a total compose as part of an RC and not a partial compose that's optimized based on whether or not the previous but compose, because like the, the, the actual, you know, uh, <laughs> version would be different, right, between the two, like, you know, a Compose basically has, like, the, um, the dates in it one, and stuff like yeah. that. We would probably want it to all come from the same well, tree. Uh, uh, another, case case though, another case, though, where this would be very helpful is with Rawhide, so a Compose goes along, it fails. Right. We're oh, like, yeah. oh, I think that might be DNF, but I'm not sure. This is great Untag, rebuild everything, and then you have to wait another eight hours. This is great for iterating. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, yes. Well, even in the freeze time as well, uh, definitely the first uh, RC compost is going to be the everything. Right. I'm not going because it's going to be in a different directory and uh, uh, and we haven't composed any RC compost before that. Right. For that release. Right. So first RC compost will have everything, but let's say we found issues. Second one. Right. And probably we add one or two bills. Uh, QA found something where they uh, wanted to add one or two bills into the right, compost. Yeah then it will save a lot. Yeah, I would say the first RC basically Yeah, first RC, yes, definitely not. And the last one that we actually release is a full compose, but we can do optimized yes. releases in yes. between there and like get them to QA immediately yep. and so say, we'll yes, it works, and then kick off a full yeah. compose, right? Yes. So yeah. And uh, in my experience, uh, I have done one RC compose for one release. Every time else, it's like multiple RC composes for one release. Yeah. So. Out of all the like six releases or seven releases I've worked on. Um, and definitely, uh, that needs some changes to Punji, as well as we need to uh, have some smartness to identify changes in these things that we talked about. And Distripos, uh, probably you guys might have heard about it, and uh, it's kind of implemented but we are still not using it because uh, there is a small issue over there. Uh, but anyway, with uh, dist repos, what we can do is um, uh, a package set phase where basically in Punji, it runs on all tags combined together on one machine. Uh, with this, uh, we can split that, run multiple uh, like uh, dist repo on different tags, on different builders, basically calling Koji and then uh, split them again on based upon Arch and sending it to different uh, builders based upon their architecture as well. So uh, it will save some time. Uh, I'm not sure how much, but definitely packets it being a, a long phase, about takes about two, two hours. So this will definitely save some time over there. And uh, uh, the idea is basically uh, call the create this repo uh, task uh, which is part of Koji, whenever a new gets a uh, new bill gets tagged and use that report. Uh, so it definitely needs some changes to Panji, and they have to fix that bug in Koji. <laughs> so, so 
The bug is multi arch? No, it's uh, the debug uh, packages and the uh, source packages are uh, going into the same So that's actually fixed in Koji 116, it's just never been pulled into Fedora infrastructure. Right. Yeah, that, like, I was working with Mike and Glean and a couple of other people on, like, finalizing the structure for this, and that has actually been fixed okay. in the latest Koji release. It's okay. just never been packaged for Fedora. Okay. Yeah, I actually built it in last week. Yeah. Oh, you did? Okay, yeah. that's okay. awesome. Okay, and I'm holding off on it for the rest of the branches because 161 is probably due before too long here. Yeah, it is, yeah. And does the coach still create repo from scratch or it caches the previous? It does merge repos internally. Mm -hmm. It caches right, so the it's previous. it's actually efficient. I'm not sure. It does, it caches the previous. I have yeah. back open there. Okay. The, 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 the design of it is that it uses the previous repo as input, and the same as it does for the builder it repos. Yeah, it, it's very efficient it, on how it It's supposed to be. Yeah. If it's not, then it is a bug, but I've not seen that reported or seen that. I reported practice. it, but <laughs> 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 I haven't checked it for some time, so I will check it now. Okay. The last one, which is not my favorite one. <laughs> uh, no. Creating these images on demand or on internal phases. Uh, on demand, obviously, Anaconda is involved in some of those images. Definitely, it will be slow. If, like, let's say, package gets built and it goes into one of the image, probably we are uh, creating a image and waiting for like 40 minutes to complete, which is not optimal. Hence, not my best option. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, and also, it's very complicated to implement. Uh, because uh, we have to create the repos and then create the images out of it. And then we uh, carefully have to copy all these uh, repos into the Panji compose later on when we run the actual Panji. Not ideal. You're uh, still not saving time on depth solving because you, uh, well, you're not really saving time on depth solving because it, that task is still going to get run inside of each image build process. Mm -hmm. And on top of that, you're still downloading the packages to the thing again. Yes, yes. And so, like, probably uh, uh, easier, quote unquote, when that would be to first get it so that it doesn't force you every time to re-download everything, that there's mm -hmm. a way to tell if there's a permanent cache directory. Yes, yes. And then the second would be uh, making it so that if you've got a partial tree already in place, that you can use that as a source to feed into uh, to produce it so that you can skip some steps in the yes. process. Thanks for the session. And uh, nothing much. It uh, saves time in image building and like uh, need changes for Koji, Panji, and some smartness. As I said, not my favorite. Uh, that these are the four options that I was thinking about, and I have taken sessions uh, from you guys. Uh, that's really helpful. But this is the goal of my previous <laughs> uh, release engineer, and now became my goal. Bungie needs to be a gatherer, not a creator. Uh, so everything should be ready. Bungie just goes there, collects them, puts them in place. Uh, that's the goal. I mentioned Why? you. Yeah. Why is it not on the watch? <laughs> <laughs> you haven't written the code yet. <laughs> <laughs> I don't work code anymore. I'm a manager. <laughs> huh? It's your job. So. Sure. Any questions for us? Oh, this is just, um, yeah. so, so, I mean, uh, it's not like, I mean, the work you are going to about going ahead and looking at how long it takes. I'm wondering if it would make sense to basically create a food chart for Bungie for the compose process every time it runs. Mm -hmm. So you just look at this 16 hour code and say, wait, we're looking, waiting for the SV90X builder for two hours, mm -hmm. you know, or just, you know, basically having a graphical view of why it took that long. That would that uh, sorry the comment was if it would would it make sense to have some sort of an overview of where time is spent in the compose process so that we can actually see what was the slow part and that's a great suggestion it would actually be kind of helpful and you can sort of get this information in part from the logs because there are timestamps for everything the only downside is that due to some implementation details especially for the image building. Like you don't actually get run times from the tasks themselves. You would have to query Koji about that. And if there are multiple phases running in parallel, like if you remember the diagram, like 
they all start in given order and finish in a given order. So like it might be waiting just for another phase to finish. Right, but if, even if we got the duration on each task and like sorted it by what's the slowest task here, that would be useful. Because yeah, we could so look at the slow stuff. It would be useful if we get the durations for every single task. That's a fair point. And yes, and also I just wanted to add one more point over there. Um, yes, we can do that, but every day the builders act differently. Yeah, but but so that but you're you're saying they act differently, but you if you could, if you could solve if you could see at a glance how they act differently, maybe that would give you a better idea of like in over everything over, over the time or, or over the yeah, time. Yeah, I mean you. Yeah, yes. I'm, not, I'm not saying that one single one would be like yes. here's the problem, but. Yeah, definitely. Just to repeat the comment, it's that if we have this information, we can actually tell when these weird outliers are happening and where. Like what suddenly starts taking longer time than it did before. Actually, I was doing some profiling on the package set phase, like a few weeks ago, and I found out that the second like function which was called like most of the time and took most of the time was the interpreter lock for threads. Like Python interpreter one, so it was like around the half of the time of the, of the whole package set uh, duration. Just it's the, it's like locking, acquiring uh, threads, and locking. Yeah, I mean, okay. So the comment is that from some profiling, it might be that the actual slowdown is ineffective implementation in Python. That yeah. we are using thread threads in a non-optimal way. Again, this might actually be solved by the suggestion number two of moving this logic into Koji and not actually preparing the package set in function. That part is mostly an improvement, like enabler for further optimization. Hmm? Uh, there was an item, like the first step was checksumming, checking checksums, something like that. Is this actually necessary? Would it the question is if we actually need to compute the checksum for the images or if we could cache them somehow. Yeah. And I'm not actually sure if it's possible because in each compost you get a different image. Like the even if the packages are same, I believe that you will get like a bitwise different file. You will. Time sure. steps will be different. We, we, we can better solution to the city way. I mean, it's. I was just looking at it because I was wondering the same thing. It's just not that hard to make Gen OFS just spit out the sums. Yeah, and Xcompress <laughs> already does this. But we do not always run that command. So the comment was that we can, when we run Gen I, I, I saw FS, yeah. you know, whatever that command is, it can spit out the checksum as well. The Downside with that is that we do not have direct access to that with, for creating, say, live media. Why not? Uh, it's somewhere behind Koji like behind behind Task, behind yes, but we live media creation. So it needs to be changed <laughs> in four different places. We also check some things that aren't ISO. Okay, yeah. but you're checking the check something two files, and we can make it so you don't have to check some one file. The fact that we don't check some of the other files, we don't make the other file the same way, it's not a right. problem there. <laughs> <laughs> No, like even if Forex finally moves over to Zarisa, there's some work on that. Um, yeah, we should just take the checksum data that's output by the image well, creation tool. Yet, but yeah. Yeah. yeah, the image creation tool, either old Geniso image or Zarisa OFS, they're going to output you that information. No reason to do it twice, because it just takes five minutes away. Yeah. Okay, so the comment is use checksums from the tool that created the image. Yeah. The um, reproducible build guys are doing work on making like ISO creation and stuff be reproducible. It's currently not totally possible because of date and timestamps and stuff like that. You end up slightly different. So there's people working to try and make that be reproducible so they could do things like that. The, yeah. the, the reproducible guys actually do have some of this work already in place in the so like that, which is yeah. one of the reasons why I'm working on moving to it in live CD creator. Um, which you guys don't use anymore, so you don't care. But um, that's one of the reasons. Yeah, but uh, it's one of the reasons I, I have a branch where I'm working on actually changing over to that. Um, but the other thing is, Gen I seven is basically dead. No, uh, there's. Yeah, it, it's. 
Um, I had the team we guys have switched over, and I'm in the process of switching over for live CD tools. Um, I know there's apparently a couple of quirks with how Morax actually produces bootable media that is blocking Zeriso FS from being used instead of Geniso mid, but. Or could they uh, not have? What don't they have? Well, so the problem is that uh, uh, Morax assumes that the ISO media tool cannot actually create the hybrid ISO in one step. Zeriso FS can. And so uh, it mangles the image. The way it does is it manually mangles the image and plugs it in, yeah. and it screws it up in the process because the padding is slightly different between okay. how Geniso image does it but and how That should be easy enough to fix Morax, though. Yeah, it is easy enough to fix. It's just, you know, yeah. DCL hasn't gotten around Sure. I, when I found that in my own code, it was like, wow, <laughs> this is really weird. <laughs> but yeah, there, there's a couple of ways to like improve that there. Okay, so this was a very long comment about possibilities of improving, creating <laughs> images with different tools that might be more efficient. So I got a question, which is not a question. <laughs> because there was a like discussion. Yeah, the there, there's another slide that says discussion, so like, <laughs> let's pretend that that one is on right now. So I like to change this to include one more thing. So there's one more you know, image or thing coming out, one more file coming out of it in the end. The good thing is it takes roughly five seconds to make, so it's not going to make the, the timeline any worse, but I don't really understand how to fit it into that, so I'd love to have a discussion with you guys, perhaps. Essentially, I want to make a base snap. After pulling for it, I just want to plug it into that so it spits out of the whole infrastructure. So then I don't think that's just going to get produced. And then you know you're going to have the lovely time of having to produce the door runtime flat pack. So that'll be that'll that'll be a whole other set of things. That will most likely fall in the making images part. Okay. I mean, currently, I think currently I don't have a plan to create a uh, out of compose process that I would consider to be just because we don't compare. Sure that the cache is used by the 
DNF code that's right. figuring out the DNS We need to reuse the same in a different tool as well. So that part is also difficult. I have no idea how that works right now. That's another question though. It seems like there's some level of loading effort we have by making it so that when Koji has a build, it can write to more than one place and then just putting a copy of Mount Koji up sitting next to the S390 in, in Westford. Well, uh, yeah. <laughs> oh boy, my, my, no, no. Day, aren't you? my thoughts are basically that the cache would be per builder, and yeah, and so for example, the cache is per builder, and right? it would fill up over time. Yeah, right. And so like if if this task went on this builder uh, this time, it would create a cache, right? If it goes to a different builder next time, it creates a separate cache, but that's okay because the cache is an optimization. It's right. not necessarily, you know, it's not if it's not the there, success. if it's not there, it will basically go get the right stuff, right? Um, but the idea here, you know, we could do an optimization where you say, you went to this builder last time and, um, you know, that builder is currently free, so go ahead and go there. But the idea here is that essentially, you know, you make it generic enough so that all of these different tasks, including pulling DNF, including pulling, or sorry, RPMs, including pulling other things, could possibly reuse, you know, this cache that is per builder. So if you're gonna build like, you know, if you're gonna create images in using Anaconda and you need to pull down stuff um, from the build install that was created, you, we can also pull those down, not just RPMs, right? Are all these builders? builders? Are That's Koji. Or yeah. are any of them births? All of them are births. Well, okay, well, so, so that it's actually per, per host they're, they're hosted on. Yeah, because then you just have a, you have a shared disk, wouldn't you? You can yeah. just pull that in. Well, well you could. So, let me so are you this. talking about writing cache? Uh, comment writing about caching for all these caching. So that it includes not just the tools that would consume the cache, but also a bunch of the infrastructure around it that would maintain right. the cache, yeah. which makes it even more complicated for us. Right. I mean, I was well, talking about the DNF cache. The, qu <laughs> that the right. question more is, can we filter it through something like currently NFS is um, is basically something that like you can't create like a proxy for, it, right? However, HTTP is something you could create. So it's, it is already all cached. It's, it's already already cached. Yeah. What does that mean? The Koji packages when all the downloads for the via HTTP happen for making that kind of runtime because. Right. None of the DNF processes are using NFS directly. They're all using it via HTTP, yeah. which has a huge big cache on coach packages, right. which caches all the RPM. So they're not hitting disk. They're being served out of right. memory 90% of the time. Right. It's very rare that they're actually hitting disk. The only time you hit the disk is when you're doing things like running create repo to actually generate the repo data, because then you got to and and then Koji does optimizations like skips that and stuff like that where it assumes if the file name's exactly the same, nothing's changed, and it shoves all the existing, it pulls the metadata from the existing metadata and just updates it rather yeah. than creating So what you're scratch. saying is it is cached, so it's not, so we're not hitting Mount Koji, but we are hitting a proxy that is outside yeah. of the building. It's, right? it's yeah. cached at the wrong point, basically, I because the tools are still fetching every time and right. resolving everything having to go through that work every single time. Right, but they're just not hitting no. code. So right. the, yeah. the reason that's intentionally done that way is to ensure that every time that you make the new image, new whatever, that you can recreate that. So any caching that you put in there to make it, you know, some optimization elsewhere, you then also need to take extra steps to make sure that however you go about doing that, that you can then reproduce that exact same thing regardless of the state in which you start. Right. But, yeah. Right. I so think what a lot of us are thinking right now is that those extra steps are smaller than what we're doing. Yeah. By a lot. Uh, yeah. They should be anyway. Yeah. Like it's, Maybe. it's literally just what's the build, what's the you know build ID of the, of the one we're using. And all this. That was yeah. the question. That was essentially yeah, the caveat that started this conversation, which is how do we do it right? Right. Yes. right. And I think what you're saying is. You know, if we go an extra step from what we're already doing, then it gets harder to do it right. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, is there a happy medium in there that helps? You know, is our assumption that Mount Koji is the bottleneck mm. uh, not valid? Mm. Right? Probably not valid. Um, so things like the Anaconda runtime, we don't actually know what's inside. Okay. So, so this is a very 
enlightening discussion about your out of time. So maybe we'll take it to a break. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. Thank you very much. Yeah.